Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we are going to talk about one of the most, um, I would say, requested topic. I get a lot of messages around this on my LinkedIn. Um, and the topic for today is the roadmap for the low level design interviews. So yeah, um, that's, that's about the topic for today. And um, um, before actually starting the video um, or the actual content, um, I would like to talk you uh, or tell you about the platform like Engine Bogey. Uh, where I am taking sessions. So if you want any one-on-one -on -one session uh, with me, any mock interview, any mentorship, you know, you can come over here and book it. Uh, if you want some low-level design understanding, you know, you can book a teaching session. If you want a mock interview, you can book a mock interview. So you know, depending on the type of session you need, you can you know um, book a session with me on on this platform. I'll be putting a link to my profile uh, in the description of the video. So yeah, you can go there and you know book the session. So, yeah. Without um, uh, much ado, let's let's um, go to the actual topic for the video. So, as I told you, uh, today today's uh, video is about the roadmap for the low-level design interviews. So, in the beginning, let's talk about system design. What actually it is, right? Um, system design is of two type: low-level design and high-level design. And today's video will be focused more on low-level design, like how to you know prepare for it. Um, what is generally asked in those kind of interviews you know what should be the learning strategy um, once you are giving an interview how should you you know approach a low level design at a very high level we are going to discuss that so first thing like what is a system design interview right so this this interview is like a real world problem which is given to you and you have to come up with a design for it right um, so think about it like you know maybe design snakes and letters you know uh, that's a very popular uh, low level design interview problem uh, where you interview ask you you have to design a uh, snakes and letters game another example could be maybe a notification system you know, like you have a big system like amazon where you know you have multiple use cases for sending a notification maybe when a user registers you want to send a welcome notification when you when you place an order you want to send an order successful notification when you place or when you make a payment you know uh, you want to send a payment successful notification so there can be multiple type of notifications that you might want to send and that's what you want to build in a notification system so that's another example so actually you can take any system that is out there in the world and that can be actually taken as a system design interview problem so this is a real world problem and you are expected to come up with a design for it now one of the most important thing in such kind of interviews is um, is about trade-offs you know um, since no system in the world is best system you know it's always about the requirements that you have at hands and that's why you always try to come up with the trade-offs as per those requirements like the, the, the system that you have come up with is that system good for for a specific requirement will that system work for the specific requirement you know is it extensible you know is it maintainable so you, whatever design you have come up with you try to you know break that design into smaller pieces and then think about the trade-off of each of the piece so yeah but that, that's one of the most important expectation in all the system design interviews whether it is high level or low level that whether you are able to come up with the trade-offs of the design or not yeah, so uh, I told you about the major goals, which is, you know, whether you are able to come up with the trade-offs or not. If you want to learn more about system design interviews in general uh, and also about high level design interviews, uh, since I'm not covering them in this video, so there's another video which I've already created in the past. You can just go through it and learn more about it from there. Um, the link of it is uh, here and, and the link of this document that I'm presenting right now, I'll also be putting that link in the description. So yeah, you will get it from there. Now, uh, coming specifically to the low-level design interviews, what is specifically they are and what, what is asked in such kind of interviews, you know, what's the expectation in low-level design interviews, that's we're going to focus now. So here, um, in a system design interview, you have a real-world problem, right? But how you know, solve it is actually what defines low-level design interview and a high-level design interview. In a low-level design interview, as the name suggests, it's low-level, right? You touch upon some low-level things of the system. and mostly in such kind of interviews is generally about the class design you know what class structure you can come up with you know let's say if you're if you're given let's say again an example of snakes and ladders then what classes would you build in the in the in the design 
uh, to accomplish this problem or to accomplish the solution right maybe you can come up with a game class you can come up with a snake class you can come up with a letter class maybe you can come up with a dice class you know there can be n number of classes that you can come up with and then what all properties you will create in them what all you know methods you will create in them and that's the major goal of the low level design interviews some people also take low level design interviews in a machine coding format again you will get the details of it uh, in the above video which i told you um, like how low level design interviews is conducted in different different formats but essentially both kind of interviews whether it is face to face low level design interview or it's a machine coding round both of them boils down to how good class structure are you able to come up with right so yeah as I, as i told you it mostly includes discussing the class structure that you will need to create for the problem and the goal here is um, specifically the goal for low level design interviews is that how can you use some good design patterns and good design principles um, while creating the design so how good understanding of these two things you have that's what is evaluated or that's what is the expectation of the interviewer to evaluate you on right um, they try to analyze you know are you able to um, um, use some good design patterns are you able to analyze your design using some good design principles right um, so that's what is the expectation of this round so coming to, coming to the exact expectation so in any low level design interview the first thing that you should do is, uh, is is to come up with the requirements right because as i told you the trade offs that you will do right they are always as per the requirements so one very important thing that you should do right in the beginning of the interview is think about some good requirements and then discuss them with the interviewer and freeze them um tell them what you're going to build for and what you're not going to build for right so that you and your interviewer um they are they are both at the same page and they both align on the set of requirements that the solution will be for so requirement gathering and system constraints phase is one of the most important thing that you should do right in the beginning the second thing um that interviewer expect is like uh class structure and the entities and the associations right like what all classes you are able, able to come up with and you are and how you are associating those classes with each other that's another thing that we already told that i already told you right that is expected out of this low level design interview and the major evaluation criteria that you have right like how less coupling you have in the system how good is the extensibility is the system or is the design that you have created is it maintainable right and all of these things you will get if you use good design principles and patterns and that's what we're going to see in the next section like how can we learn better about them the last thing as i told you is 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 about you know if your design is following some good principles and if you have used some patterns over there or not right so yeah that's about the uh, expectation and what is actually asked in the low level design interviews now let's jumping to the learning strategy right how you can learn to excel in a low level design interview so what i've seen in most of the interviews or you know um, or in the mock interviews that i take or or my or in my discussions that i do with a lot of mentees is people watch youtube videos you know of the sample problems maybe you go to my youtube channel you watch you know maybe um a parking lot system design or parking lot low level design and let's say in the interview also the same problem is asked then you can you know come up with the similar classes right but one of the major thing which i see is either people you know confuse between the classes they have just you know very high level idea ki, okay these these classes were created in that design so they are not able to come up with a right set of classes or even if they are able to come up with the right set of classes they are not able to defend their design that is one of the most important thing as i been telling you right the trade offs the pros and cons you know how why your design is good you know why your design is not good in a specific area why is it following the requirement so these trade offs are really important and i see um this thing is majorly lacking in all of these people i should not say all maybe most of the people that i take interviews with right? so that's why i have come up with this video actually to tell you maybe you know uh, what can be a better way instead of just watching the sample problem videos so the very first thing which i feel you know this problem happens is because the missing concepts so there are important concepts in low level design which is called design principles and patterns which you need to learn first if you directly jump on to solving some problems without learning these concepts it will be very difficult for you to come up with a new design or to you know analyze your design or to figure out whether the design is good or not or you know what are the trade offs and all of the design so in the interviews um if that if these kind of questions are asked then you will not be able to answer so very first thing that you should learn um uh, while starting low level design preparation is the concepts and concepts uh, in low level design are majorly two one is design principles and another one is design patterns so let's talk in brief about both design principles and patterns and let's try to understand how they can be utilized you know uh, at different different times or different different parts of the system so design principles right they are actually used for analysis uh, majorly whenever you have come up with any design 
to analyze whether the design is good or not you know uh, what problems it has or is it following the principles or not that's where you use principles um, so whether a design is good or not it's what you check by using principles if the design is following principles generally you consider your design to be a good design similarly for patterns they are actually used for implementation so if you have figured out your design is not good right if you have analyzed using principles that it is not following some principles and um, you know you need to improve it then that's where you use patterns um, um, I, I'll, I'll create some another video to explain this thing uh, in more detail but right now um, let's just take it as you know uh, whenever you are analyzing a design um, whether it is good or not that's where you use principles and when you when you are actually fixing a design that's where you use patterns now since we are going to use these two things so it's important to learn about these two things right so that's why for the design principles there is a very important uh, set of principles called solid principles um, my suggestion is to go over them in detail try to understand what they are single responsibility principle open close principle is co substitution principle interface segregation principle and also dependency inversion principle right these are all very important principles try to go through them in detail and try to understand understand them practically like you know how to analyze a design using them or how they you know uh, if, if a design is following a particular principle why the design is good so idea is try to understand each of these principle in detail and once you have done that try to also follow or try to understand some existing patterns very popular patterns that you have so the important patterns which i feel are strategy builder singleton factory and and there's a, and there's a little uh, derivation of strategy called composition right i mean actually you implement a strategy using composition um, command pattern is a little derivation of strategy so um, these are some of the most important patterns which i have seen generally are useful strategy builder singleton and factory um, but if you want if you think some other patterns like chain of responsibility prototype but some other uh, patterns also if you feel are useful you can learn about them also but the idea is try to learn about both principles as well as patterns in detail um, so that you know you can use them when you are actually solving problems so once you have done that once you have understood the concepts um, then try and practice some problems um, take a few problems and try to do them by yourself uh, there are some ways um, that that you can use so the idea is it's all about discussions in design you know uh, whenever you're solving a problem the more discussions that you do um, while solving it uh, the better you can learn about it and that's why you can come up with more trade offs you know let's say if you're discussing with x person uh, you can think about some trade offs the other person can think about some trade offs and that's how you can think about overall trade offs of the design right so the idea is the more you discuss with people the more uh, understanding of the low level design you will get and also try to implement low level designs end to end on computer you know because in machine coding rounds uh, you will have to also implement the design and also by implementing you will get more clarity of integration of multiple classes uh, because one of the problems i also see in most of the people is they can come with basic classes but when i ask them to write the wrapper code or to or to write the code which can integrate all the classes together that's where they face difficulty so if you can write end to end running code with good classes good design patterns good uh, good classes following principles uh, you can come up with some uh, i mean that will be really great right so try to do more hands on uh, and try to have more discussions now the point comes in how can you do discussions right so there are some i mean you can you can use some ways some of them i can suggest some of them you can also invent by yourself so one of the ways you know uh, you can watch my video um, think about like you know instead of watching the video first you can first i mean in in all, in all the videos you can see there's a problem statement link in the in the github app right so you can go to the problem statement read the problem statement completely and try to solve it by yourself once you have solved it by yourself then watch the video and try to compare your design with my design so it is like self discussion you are doing right so that's one of the way another way that you can do is maybe find out some friend who is also learning low level design you know and ask them ki okay we both figure out ki there is one problem that we want to solve and we both will come with, with our designs and then we both will discuss the trade offs of each of our designs that's another way right another um, third way which i can think of is like platforms like engine bogey right where like i am registered as a mentor or an expert and you can book a session with me and you can give a mock interview to me and then i can you know tell you your pros and cons of the design and you know uh, whether you are able to come up with good designs or not and how can you improve so there are definitely definitely multiple ways um, to have discussions on those designs but before having those discussions before practicing problems understand concepts and then practice problems that will be the better way of doing it okay so now let's say you have already prepared you have learned it and now let's say you 
are actually you know giving an interview right so how should you uh, approach a low level design whether in an interview or actually you know how, what should be the steps so the first step that i feel is a good is a good way to do it is first always come up with the model classes so whatever design you are coming up with you, you should list down the classes that you will create it create in it so again let's take the example of snakes and ladders um let's say snakes and ladders you are creating um snake class ladder class um game class player class dice class so there are bunch of classes that you can create right so the first step should be always start with the model classes uh, and try to think practically you know whatever practically you have entities in the practical world or in the physical world for the system try to map them exactly into the entities or the model then the second step should be you should think about the properties of the class so each of the classes that you come with think about what all properties it will have so like a snake class they can have a start point or at an end point a player can have a name a dice can have a you know maximum faces um a letter can also have a start and end point a game can have players you know it can have board a board can have cells so there can be bunch of properties in each of the class so second step should be you should think about all the properties that each of the class should have don't think too much whatever is coming to your mind naturally about those classes just you know keep filling them the idea is not to think about everything at once whatever is keep coming to your mind you should just start writing them right should you should not be blocked so first think about the classes then think about the properties till now we are going bottom up right we have started with the i mean the the least level thing which is the model classes and their properties and th- that's what we have designed first right the third step actually reverses it the third step is the figuring out the behavior of each of the classes and what i have realized if you try to think about what all methods or behaviors that should go in each of the class if you directly try to figure them out it's very difficult because you will not know what behaviors your board class should have what behaviors your snake class should have right so every class will have very different behaviors and to come up with them you should actually reverse your strategy instead of going bottom up you should do top down so start with your top level method first which is your in general your api method or if you are writing a game kind of thing then your game runner class or game game start game method kind of thing right so the idea is whatever is your top level method you think where the interaction really starts which is the first entry point start your behavior from there and start writing the pseudo code from there so for example in snakes and ladders again there will be a start game method in the game class right so that's what you should write first and then from there you should keep writing the pseudo codes or or the actual code and keep discovering methods on each of the model classes right and that's how you should come up with the behaviors for each of the class um that's the third step um and yeah once you have come up with the behavior of each of the class um then you should analyze whether your design is following the um good principles or not if it is following the good principles good if it's not following then fix them maybe you can use some patterns or you know you can use um, some other ways maybe using some interfaces or some other ways to improve your design so the idea is the three steps to come up with the design is model classes then properties and then reversing the approach and coming up with the behaviors using in, in the top down model So yeah I think that's mostly about the um um low level design preparation that I wanted to tell you there are a lot of resources online available on each of these things solid principles as well as patterns I do not want to suggest any specific site or something because I personally feel most of them are equally good there are some very good books also there are some very good channels also which 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 on which you can read about them but the idea is first understand the concepts and then the practice problems and then in the low level design interview follow these steps So I hope um, this video help will help you in your low level design preparation or in your interviews. Um, that's all I had from my side for this video. Um, thanks a lot for watching it. If you have any suggestions, if you have any comments, um, please put them in the um, on on the video. And also, if you like it, please do share it with your friends and please do subscribe to the channel. All the best for your interviews and see you in the next video. Bye bye.